Well, welcome back to the Toledo branch. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody who's subscribed recently and everybody just stopped by to watch. Uh, this channel is definitely not about uh, view counts or popularity or making money or anything. It's just a guy playing with trains. So, I'm not, not much into really doing instructional videos, but I thought I'd touch a little bit on backdrops today. Uh, I've been working on this almost eight feet of backdrop for the last few days. Uh, backdrops can be a pretty touchy subject. Uh, some people think you should just have just the suggestion of mountains, shapes that kind of resemble a couple different tones. And some people think they should go all out in uh, Da Vinci style and put every detail they possibly can into it. And I'm kind of—I've been kind of looking towards something that's in the middle ground, something that's got. You can definitely tell they're mountains and there's some detail, but it's not enough to distract from the actual layout. <laughs> so what, what I've done here. I want to figure out where my mountains and ridge lines are all going to run. I'll take and block in. Anything way in the background will be a real darker color. Anything kind of in the middle will be something in between. And then the foreground, I use a real light base color when I'm blocking in. And these forested hills are nothing more than a vertical brush stroke with a fan, fan brush. And usually around yeah four to five different tones of of greens um got anything from a darker green to black to real light green in the foreground i'm even going to throw some just straight yellow in uh paints that i'm using are just really cheap craft paints um everything you see that's green up here is done with just yellow and black I'm just just vary the mixture till you get color you like. Uh, just keep in mind that what's in the tube is, or what's in the cup after you mix, it's going to dry a, quite a bit darker than what the, the mix looks like. And like I say, uh, all, all I'm doing is using fan brushes, a couple different sizes, br bristle densities. Yeah, uh, when I mix the paint. Um, I do thin it down a little bit just so it kind of flows a little better, but all I'm doing on here is just vertical, vertical strokes. I would say the background, I'm using a smaller fan brush so that the strokes, you know, that the, what, the lines, the vertical lines that you're getting on there aren't nearly as, uh, you know, they're a lot finer, less definition, and everything just blends together a lot better. And, you know, you don't have to, definitely don't have to be perfect. All you got to have is that vertical line in there. And try to go randomly with it. The first couple of layers, you can just really just dab it on. But when you start working in shadows and highlights, it kind of got to be a little more precise. Yeah, can't, can't really haven't done much in here and seven or eight months other than the uh, operations videos I did a few months ago. I got busy with a couple other hobbies. And... But I'm back on it. So. Should be seeing more upda updates a little more often. When you get down close to the backdrop it gets a little tricky. Or a bit close to the scenery, I should say. 
basically with that, I'm going to come back in with the uh, smaller brush, get it loaded up, wipe it off. At areas where you don't have a whole lot of room, I'm going to do a little more detail. Use the smaller brush. <clears throat> Try not to cover up the uh, meadows or clear cut areas, however you want to describe them. See that in there. This area, the areas around here, just trying to get that filled in. Remember, painting is just it, all it is is an optical illusion. To so figure out how the illusion works, the rest of it just kind of falls into place. Just a whole bunch of vertical lines and your eye looks at it and thinks there's a force amount in there. It's philosophy behind it's kind of interesting actually. <clears throat> Basically I am going to paint all the way across this lower foreground section and then we'll uh, come back in with the uh, uh, probably at least two more tones, some blacks and more yellow, and probably do some highlights of so just straight yellow. So I'll check back with you in a little bit. Well, that was about two microseconds for you, but about 30 minutes of dabbing paint on the backdrop. Uh, I'll come back here. I'm just going to come in with just straight black. I got it thinned down quite a bit so it flows a little better. And I'm just going to start randomly. Just dabbing away. I'm going to try not to get too much dark right along the ridge lines because I've taken make the bottom of the mountain behind it a little dark and then when I come in and finish I'm going to be coming in with some highlights like I've done up here and it really pulls that ridge line out and gives it a little more three-dimensional effect Uh, the camera really pulls out every little detail in this paintwork. It's a, it's a downside to high definition. Just it gets to be where you can see a lot more in the video than you can with your eyes. So when you're just looking at it, everything really blends together and does a pretty good job. Of course, with that paint still being wet and glossy, it adds even more contrast. 
when you're looking at it in person, the, there's definitely a lot of contrast in it, but it's, it just, it blends together a lot more. I'm just going to continue on with that, give the whole thing a good covering, and then I'll come back and uh, do some highlights on it. And I'll bring you back in now. I've got a house full of people, so just ignore any background noise you might hear. Um, so I've got the black in. It's just a little too prominent for what I'm looking for, so I'm going to come back over with a green pretty similar to what I've highlighted this area with let's give it a good coat of that to help kind of tone down some of that black and then then we'll we'll do some highlighting after that and this little mixture I'm kind of looking for kind of a guacamole color and that should give us a pretty good medium green anyway back to work well that looks a lot better uh I'll come in and just take and place some highlights here and there. It's just real thin, straight yellow. That didn't work too well. It's real random. Once that dries, it pretty blends in pretty well. I've got all the highlights added. Uh, last step I'm going to do is right along the bottom here, I'm going to take a, a green and splotch in some black because eventually there'll be a underbrush that's going to go right up against all that. Uh, blend it into the, turn the backdrop and the trees that'll be in the foreground. To, I don't think the backdrop in this section, about as done as it's going to get, I might come back in and uh, a little more tones in some of the meadows but uh, I'm pretty happy with the results on this um, thank everybody for watching and uh, get a little more work done I'll run another update video